Yeah. They talk about that, and like in the movie, it's like, whoa, you got it right. And I, was I remember there, being I in a physics lecture, and my friend Andrew Powell asked me that. He asked a bunch of us. And I, yeah, we, we were like struggling around. We're in this like, big bank stadium. I remember this. Um, and we're getting angry with ourselves and everything in the world. It's a, right. I mean, the famous story for that is Marion von Savant. That's a, who I think for Parade magazine, right? She would write this puzzle thing. And she's like, supposedly has an IQ of 200. That was her story. She put that in and then, you know, gave the answer the next week or whatever it was. And all these people wrote in just so upset, including statistics professors telling her she didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. What was the army one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but in the actual game, the Monty Holt, like the, it's a TV show, right? They would mess with it a little bit more, right? There was like funny stuff going on. So um, the same principle though, right? And I mean, you, know, you can probably, I think to this day on New York City, if you kind of walk into the wrong group, someone will be just, you know, they got a little thing, they pop down and they're just doing a little crowd and oh, yeah, someone will play, but of course they're part of it. I watched my aunt get fleeced for 50 bucks on Fifth Avenue once and like, 95, she was, showing, she was showing me, 94 I think, showing me around um, New York. She was living in New Jersey. And, uh, and, and, she, and she was saying like, you gotta be careful. Like, don't, you know, and she was like really savvy and all this, I'm like, okay, okay. But she just, I don't know, she just kind of got swept into a little crowd, like a little group, like people are grouping humans, right? And then suddenly, you know, there's this game being played and the guy running it says, what do you think to her? And she's like, well, I think it's that one. And he says, well, so how much money do you have? You know, like it just like escalated really quickly. She didn't realize she was playing the game. And they're like, gone. <laughs> uh, I kind of enjoy that. Um, so this is, you know, this is the golden ratio, right? And uh, it, if its continued fraction is, is one over one plus one over one, which is spectacular. It's a um, continued fractions, right? In general, uh, this kind of thing, um, they're all it's written in this way, right? So these are all integers greater than or equal to one plus one over. And this is this game. Yeah, so you can, you know, this is this amazing thing where you could write any number like this. It's obviously rational numbers can be, but um, irrational numbers can be expressed like this. And then there's these sort of beautiful results that if you truncate it at any point, that's the best, you know, depending, like that's the best uh, rational approximation for that thing, right? So pi, you know, like pi is like 22 over seven, roughly. And then the next one down is, you know, higher integers on top of each other. So if you think about truncating this, the higher the number here, you know, if this is 137, then this is one plus a very small amount, right? So suddenly at this point, the correction has become very small. It doesn't matter what's here. So this is the least, having a one here, is the is the largest correction you can have. So this is this is why you, this is the most most irrational number because it takes so long to approximate. Just like a little bit. Yeah. So if you've got the the closest, you know, given given you have to think about the size of the denominator, right? As you go down, as you sort of increase the denominator, and you're getting a better and better approximation of any number, right? So you're doing that. You can imagine that. Um, you know, and so you could do pi, right? You could say, let's have something over six, something over five, seven, something over eight, something over nine. It would get worse, right? It sort of goes up and down. It's not great. And suddenly you get a, this is a good one, right? And then they're kind of worse for a while until you get to, and the continued fractions are the one, those, those truncations are the ones that are the best one. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, this is, uh, this is a really, um, it's a beautiful thing, right? And it, you know, it comes from our the rectangle story. Um, golden ratio really does appear a fair amount. There was some crazy, uh, I'm going to say monks, but I think, uh, I think um, Catholic, some Catholic priests, you know, who, who in the 1800s or whatever said everything is, a, you know, like a Fibonacci numbers, right? That, that was the thing, because that's connected to this bit, right? So the, the ratio of the Fibonacci's as you go out, becomes the golden ratio. 
as they index up, which is a beautiful little bit of linear algebra. And it's this matrix here, basically. It's uh, um, the, the eigenvalues of that thing. One of them is the golden ratio. Anyway, that's fun. But yeah, no, I, that, that, that course, this is, I'm talking about chaos. That, that, this is a chaos course in 1990. It's basically the same course. It really still, it's very fun. And underneath it is this crazy, crazy, crazy realization that even if you, the universe is a big clock, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to predict it. Quantum was the other. <laughs> okay, now we're in trouble. Um, anyway, this is, a, I thought I'd show you this one. And then we'll go back to, um, Yeah, let's do quantum deep learning. Great. Just say it and make a billion dollars with a company. We do quantum AI. Which is to say we do quantum linear regression. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just just say wave function, finance. It's great. People love it. This is it. This is here's here's someone's had a bit of fun. But they're looking at the signals that are being sent out by um Fungi or fungi, depending on how you want to say that, I suppose. But, uh, and, and then try, so there's been a bit of a lift here to say there's a, a language. They have words. And, um, right, I, I mean, I haven't looked further into this, but it's a little bit of a bold claim. You know, so I think 50, this so sort of like, he's got the, the caterpillar fungi, he's got, got a bunch of them and, and trying to get out the signals. Now, clearly, these things do have signals, right? Do they make a language which has, you know, um, that, that, that's some, I mean, they're, they're, what, what's a language, right? You have to have um, some definition of that, I suppose. But anyway, claim of 50 words, so we'll see. You know, like sign language was not considered a language for a long time. Do you, you know this? Sort of, yeah, right. It was very, um, which, was ter which was terrible and also led to terrible, uh, like a terrible outcomes for um, deaf people because they were forced to try and talk or, or whatever, right? It was not recognized. It's a lot of deaf people who just, you know, they're learning sign language because they're hearing parents. Like, yeah. Like, 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 it's incredibly powerful. There's a fantastic Oliver Sacks book, which probably, you know, he's famous for a lot of books, but um, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, that sort of thing. Um, but he has one called Seeing Voices, which is, which is a, you know, a lot, it, it is, is about, um, sign language, basically. Uh, and uh, he has a nice anecdote at the start. I think it's Martha's Vineyard. He goes to Martha's, this sort of the story of going to Martha's Vineyard and seeing people on a veranda talking, and then they go into sign language for a joke. And they'll laugh, and then they go back to talking in English, right? So, and the story there was that Martha's Vineyard had some rather large, high um, percentage of deaf people like, genetically. And so people were bi somewhat bilingual. The joke was better in um, sign language, I guess. It was, a, like it was a better choice, you know. Um, but, you know, things like conjugations and right, all the sort of structures of language, they're in, yeah. Uh, I mean, fantastic. So we'll see, so I don't know, there's a comment down the bottom, right? <laughs> the, the, the little, you know, this is a one scientist pouring, you know, cold water all over it. Um, maybe it's over enthusiastic. I could, it would have to be an English accent, I'm not sure. But anyway, so. Um, and would require far more research and testing of critical hypotheses before we see <laughs> fungus on Google Translate. <laughs> yeah, see, if you read in a strand, like a, we'll see it on fungus, you know, that it's not going to have the, the impact. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jeeves is the great, right, where you say all these kind of very, Sort of nice things, but it's absolutely <laughs> devastating. <laughs> yeah, yes, that is interesting. Yeah, right, just, just, right, uh, yeah, yeah. very clever indeed. So. Um, anyway, it's interesting. I just, I thought though, in here to get to the Uziyama thing, there was, um, yeah, so look, integrity of the pack, the fungus pack, um, talking about, they're kind of sentences, right? And so there's a little bit of talking about, uh, Think, did they say danger? No. That's it. Food. Injury. That's the thing I picked up on. Yeah. I mean, 
humans talk a lot about foods, by the way, before we dump on the fungus for mentioning the food. They talk about food all the time. Like, and we have TV shows. We love it. You know, like Stanley Tucci goes through Italy and people are just crazily excited about it. You know, he's basically just eating his way everywhere. And he, you know, speaks well, he's good looking. And, um, but yeah, we love it. Um, you know, the, the, uh, Maslow's, Maslow's, uh, hierarchy, right? We're really excited about the, the food part and the shelter part, right? Like, um, um, HGTV is, you know, really just goes straight at the bottom of the, the, the pyramid where there's, it's pretty good. We're very, but we're very excited about it. Um, you know, so you know, it's safety. I mean, that's it's incredibly important. Um, well, self-actualization is at the top, right? But Wi-Fi is at the bottom as well, right? That's the new addition. Wi-Fi must have Wi-Fi. Most important. I mean, yeah. That's right. All right, let's talk about this. Okay. This is also, I think the context is important. This is 940s, right? Um, you know, this is five years before Shannon introduces L. Ron Hubbard to his friend McCulloch, who is the JPL guy, and talks about hypnosis or whatever. Um, maybe he was just palming him off, and he was totally fine. I want, I want to get back to my other stuff. Um, yeah, so, well, but I've seen it, I guess, expressed a bit differently, right? But this is fair enough, yeah. But this is... This is, yeah, transcendence is at the top of this one. Um, is this a, oh, look, there are a lot of them. They have different colors. Why can't, why has this got such terrible? Okay, this, this, I think this is more of the, more of the, the true, right. And so it's exactly, it's exactly this. You need this, right? Once you've got this and it's solid, then you can, right? Because you can have this without safety. Right, you just this is a bare survival. This is getting better, and that yeah, the joke version is people take this picture and then like write terribly Wi-Fi, yeah, um, uh, you know, and then there's this. I mean, this is right. I mean, I mean, whether this is really a stack, you know, this is whatever. This is again, it's the forties, um, feelings of accomplishment, and then self-actualization. Right. Yeah, achieving one's full. I mean, it's a bit like, so this is a professor saying this, right? Good. That's terrific. Um, eudaimonia, right? The, the, the um, ancient Greeks, you know, of course, the ones who are doing pretty well, the grapes were being fed to them. You know. <laughs> I'm sure that the help hated them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all a pyramid scheme, right? So um, anyway, uh, that, that's, that's a, so the fungus are, you know, they're definitely operating. They need this, right? Animals. Animals totally have this kind of story, right? So, what this? This is what Pratchett is doing most of the day. Um, sure. Yeah. Well, Big Bird is tough. It's tough, right? He's always on the edge a little bit. You know, he's got. Well, I'm older, so he had. Um, uh, Snuffleupagus, right? Oh, yeah. Who was imaginary when I was a kid, and that was tough on Big Bird. He, well, you know, no one would believe him. He's like, he's just there, and he'd be gone, and his head was kind of exploding. It's like Elmo with the, the disinformation on, on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I think it's a recurring thing. Yes, Elmo is like, he's up to like, blow his little top. You know? Xenobots are interesting, right? Because they get to being a Pac-Man, basically, that can make a, that's the sort of the latest one. They kind of herd other little frog cells around and make another Pac-Man. Um, and the stories for this are fantastic, right? Because people just go straight to Terminator, right? Yeah. They're just straight to Terminator or straight to Robocop or whatever, you know. Um, Jurassic Park's always hanging around. You've got to talk about that. You know, like this, you, you maniacs, you're going to kill us all. Um, but probably it's going to be a long time. I, I, I used to call them tofu butts because they're like just butts. little little bits of mush that they made. <laughs> well, so they, they, they are, um, 
Yeah, I don't think I see that's a, this meaning the meaning compass thing. Like that's a I think I mean I've sometimes said like AI will be kind of alive when it starts to tell stories about itself. That's a framing, maybe. Um, because it's trying to figure out what it is. And or you know, another another thing is, you know, do, do, is there sort of an internal compass of this power danger thing for, for whatever thing we're talking about? Mushrooms, you know, it's got activities, you know, sure. Um but those little things, they're just, they are really just at this point, as far, like just think of those Pac-Man ones that reproduce. So they reproduce, right? So that's, that's a thing of life. I mean, that's, that's that, you know, in the, people, people have all these very, you know, one is just entropy reduction. Which is like, then corporations are alive. Like if you, if that's what you're saying, like yeah. corporations are the <laughs> Well, they have people too, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what if we do this? They the thing is it's I don't think it's wrong. They function in some kind of yeah. I mean there's the law, but there's also just like how does this work? They eat other ones. Right? I mean acquisitions, you know, it's all they, they do reproduce. Yeah. And they're you know, they're they're white blood cells are kind of the lawyers, right? I mean they rise up and they're the of white blood cells are kind of the lawyers, right? I mean they rise up and <laughs> yeah yeah well right and like so one of the great mysteries that people talk about um like I, i've seen this a lot in over the years with academics and i'm sure i've said it in talks but uh particular economists and whatever it's like the great mystery is co cooperation like why do people cooperate in large groups right because they're all and the, the pre presumption that they're all selfish individuals like why do they cooperate in groups and i think that's that comes about as a thinking because the thinkers are like economics professors or whatever who have basically destroyed other humans all the way through so their kind of existence is very much like this right i mean it's been a, um but you know your average person there are lots of people cooperating and doing things together and kind of you know i mean we right and so the opposite is the more interesting thing i think we have nice cooperative people who go about their work and then form a terrible collective that they're happy about Um, and that's when, that's when we're super dangerous because yeah, everyone feels like we're, you know, we're doing the right thing. They're the bad guys, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, and we see it written. I mean, it's just, it's happening over and over again. Red Cross is a bit complicated, right? You know, like, what's happening now? Okay. All these things and everything. And then the Red Cross came in like six months after and just started giving away solar panels for free. Oh, and destroyed the market. And then um, the guy was like, hey, like, if you could like help us maybe like, yeah. supply and like, yeah. reduce our costs, like, we could work together. That's great because like we're giving people jobs and like creating infrastructure and you're kind of ruining it. The Red Cross was like, no, nah, sorry. And then the business went over. Hand of God. Um, yeah, I mean, it's look, it's just really hard to figure out how to run a group, you know, in some ways, help run a group of 10 million, 100 million, 300 million people. It's hard. And, and people have very different ideas of how to do that. Um, so I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, and you can have the best of intentions and, and, and destroy everything. All right. So, but we think fungus hanging around in here, maybe that's not, maybe they're not up, not up into this space, but, um, but you know, the connecting forest, the whole mycological highway business, you know, like they, 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 there's a collective thing that's happening, um, which I guess people are still working out, but it can function in this big space. It's, you know, this is such an important, I mean, this is in response to, to danger, obviously, right? I mean, safety is here, but you know, immediate danger. If you don't have, especially if you don't have water for, Several days, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, these, right, this is about life and death for sure. This is still about life and death. This is still about life and death, right? This is a, you know, okay, maybe this becomes more about perhaps the collective doing well relative to another one, and 
So there's a survival of societies and things. Yeah, so, I mean, plants do a lot of different, I mean, I know they're not plants. I don't, I don't, my fungus knowledge is not great, but there's, like, you know, dormancy, that kind of thing, like if it's too cold or whatever, like you can retreat, you know. Yeah, lots of, um, yeah, they don't run away necessarily. That's good stuff. So that's attack, which is amazing. Right, it's essentially one thing. It depends how you, def yeah, but that's, it's a, it's a basically connected thing, yeah. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> I don't think they're. I don't think they're like sticking up fungus. Like it's more like like a network structure, right? So that's right. Planar, planar. Right, so if a tree gets, this one gets, well, yeah. It's like mycological or whatever it is, highways. Um, right, but there's claims like there's salmon in trees because the fungus essentially goes into rivers or whatever and essentially minerals get transported along these highways and taken up and you can see bits of fish or you know like obviously there's not a fish but um the the, the remains of that have got, been sort of brought drawn up and it's not just through tree roots right that would that's sort of our conception like a tree has roots that pull stuff in from that but there's actually all of this spreading that's going on through the fungal networks and they seem to be critical yeah so you can you know, of course, someone's gone in and like put radioactive stuff in the one tree and then seen it pop up in other trees, but not just the immediate ones, right? Like, yeah. And there's supposed to be some stories about danger there as well, where this tree gets sick and the other ones start to do things in response. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I did talk about this on Tuesday, but let, let me sort of just go through this and, and see, how we, see how we go. So um, we played around with Google Books the engram thing, and we can come back to it, but uh, let's see what we get with this. What's that? <laughs> well, I mean, look, the intent is great. Let's, 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 um, let's get basically, right? We're going to scan all the books. We're going to atomize the things into one, two, three, four, five grams. Um, and there are iterations. It's 2009, 12, and 19 in terms of them. And they haven't, got, they have gotten better. And it allows you to do some funny things. You can do, uh, I think you do sort of division kind of things or plus things like this sort of arithmetic kind of stuff in the search. So this is, um, I'm, I'll talk about Jensen-Shannon divergence, which is something we used for a long time. It's still, um, you know, people, it's, it's, it's really prevalent. I won't critique it too much, but I did mention it back with allo taxonometry. It's a bit of an odd thing. It's our friend Shannon's, you know, <laughs> I mean, He's running around with his bandwagon flag and, and no one's um, no one's listening to him. So it's kind of an example of that, I think. But anyway, but it is a, a, an entropy-based um, measure of the difference between two, uh, essentially, you know, ZIF distributions. Uh, what we have, of course, is ZIF distributions for different years um, in different, we have like English literature or English, sorry, all of English, English fiction, those sorts of things, Russian, um, the big problem, just to say again, I'll repeat it, is that English originally, and it's still a bit, pro still kind of weird, had a just ton of science put into it. So you see a lot of the structures are really because of science. Um, and you don't feel like that. You feel like they've gone to a library and gotten books, like book books. Um, and, but then a, another problem, which is completely different, but, but super deep problem, is that every book gets a vote once. And we'll talk about that. So this is a bit weird. This is comparing these distributions. This is for a decade of the 930s to the 940s uh, for all of 
this is for all of English, maybe, I think, or English. Yeah, I think all of English. But this is our first paper on this. Um, there's Lanny is here. So this is all of English. This is all of English. So, so we've taken what's the distribution uh, of words, you know, the, of, and, all that stuff is there for the, all of the 1930s, kind of, you know, smushed it together, did that for the 1940s. And these are, these are kind of weird, right? So Hitler is there, which makes, it seems reasonable. I mean, books are going to take a little, you've got to write them, they've got to be published, they've got to be, right, so they've got to appear. So there's, there's going to be a, a la, there's going to be a lag time. It's going to sort of smooth history out a little bit, right? You know, different to Twitter where you, you know, things explode. So there's going to be smoothed out. Uh, Hitler's only, I mean, Hitler's, of course, you know, awfully through the 30s, even the 20s, but the 30s and especially the 40s. So it's going to be in there. Makes sense. But you'd think perhaps this would be dominant, perhaps. 940 makes sense, right? That's that's fair. But these are kind of weird words. Lanny, bud. Okay, so we'll see what that is. Um, so there's, there's, there was some, weirdly, there was some press about this paper we wrote, and it's been cited quite well now, and it's on the Wikipedia page for Google Books. So it's sort of, it's one of these things where like, hey, you know, like, you know, I mean, look, we put it in the title, right? So strong limits, maybe we didn't say the right thing, but strong limits to the inferences of social, cultural, and linguistic evolution. Like you can just, it's very enticing, but uh, some problems. So these were actually decent, this is some decent coverage where they're, you know, they're getting, kind of getting this story right. As we know, right, the, the, the pants story for the, for the truth and the lies thing and whatever. And, you know, it's not an intentional lie. They're trying to do a good thing, but it's a mess. Ah, I do want to point out that paper. Let's see. Nope, I've got a problem with this. So this is going to be, we also looked up Danger Will Robinson because that, that's good. That's important knowledge. For you. Um, let, me, let me just get open this paper. For sure. Okay. So interesting paper because I, I just want to point to one. So here it is. It's kind of a little goofy. They have some, you know, it's, it's very long for a science paper. We went through some of it, like tons of figures. You know, they're basically saying, look, here are all these things you can do. We'll look at this one a little bit. This is, this is a bit of a, look at God just disappearing. This is this, you know, so people are a little worried about that. I mean, it's, it's flat. It's flat lined a bit, I guess. Anyway, let's, I just wanted to point, uh, this is something I didn't talk about the other day, but I wanted to point to the author list. The author list is quite interesting. Mixture of people, um, who come with, the Google Books team, so who knows, right? That's a funny author. You see this a little bit more. You see it in the medical world as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Google Books team, so God knows, that's like just humans. It's a little rough. I mean, that should be actually named people, but anyway, all right. gives you a sense of it. Uh, Stephen Pinker is here as just a, like, well, he's at Harvard, right? So this is, so they just like swept him in. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and he's happy to go with it. I mean, he, 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 I remember seeing him give talks years ago, um, when I was a graduate student. It's interesting. Uh, you know, of course he's had a very incredibly successful career. His big thing, right, is, is more recently is the, our better angels, that everything's getting better. Gave a talk here, uh, 2015, 14, maybe, uh, the Aiken lecture series. Social sciences are funny, and I just, I don't, you know, because they, he had his slides, all the words are there, he just read them out. I mean, it's such, you know, you paid a lot of money, it's just like there was no, and it's just like, wow, I remember the first time I ever saw someone just read a talk out, and I just, I'm like, I mean, I, I, it's okay. I mean, it can be beautifully done. I think people work on it, but it just seemed um, robot. <laughs> you know, you could have a robot do it. Anyway, I guess. But it, so he's, you know, he's got all these graphs of how things are better, right? There's less murder per capita, all this sort of stuff, right? But it's it's really so. Yeah, I don't. I mean, he does have a lot of evidence, uh, I suppose. But there are things going the other way that perhaps he sort of pushes pushes to the side, and you know, it's something like Ukraine doesn't really fit the narrative. And he's sort of, he's talking around it. I think he thinks it's fine. It's just a glitch in the, anyway. Uh, but this guy, does anyone know who this is? So I, I met him, I was interviewing for a postdoc. So I met him at Princeton at the IAS, um, maybe 99, a friend of mine kicking him down. 
interesting guy. Um, and he's, he uh, then moved to, you know, it was, it was sort of funny. He's clearly a um, very ambitious person and complex systems kind of character, right? So Austrian. And he then moved to Harvard where he got a, he brought $20 million. Like, so, you know, he was bringing $20 million with him. And so that, you know, people, universities get very excited when you bring, like, that's what, that's what they want, right? Yeah. So that works. You know, if you turn up to a university and say, hey, I've got $100 million. So um, Larry Summers, some of you may know, is the, was the head of um, Harvard at the time. And uh, I guess Novak, so this is a story. This is all, you know, from back channels. But uh, that, that he really wanted to be in the math department. And there are not many people in the math department. Like, the, you know, like 10 full professors, not many. Um, and they, you know, it tends not to be a world where you kind of come up through the ranks, you know, you kind of get brought in from when you, you've had a successful charisma. Those sort of, I mean, I don't really approve of this, but that's what they do, right? And, and he would, it doesn't make any sense. He's, uh, his background was more like in ecology, right? He's not a mathematician at all, right? But he wanted it because it's prestige, right? It's a, he wanted, he's on the, um, the, the pyramid there, the hierarchy, and he's, he's, he's trying to go, he's trying to self-actualize the, the hell out of it. He's got $20 million to help with the self-actualize. I know it's tens of millions, so I'm going to say this. Uh, and so I'm going to tell you the story. So um, they had to, you know, they had to agree to bring him in, right? The, the, the mass department itself had to agree to bring him in. And they had a rule that there had to be a unanimous vote for this kind of thing. Again, this is hearsay, but um, so it was clear that he was not going to get voted in. Um, and apparently Summers used to play tennis with uh, maybe the head of the department. And so they had a bit of a chat and they had a vote during the summer to change that rule when not everyone was there. So they changed the rule. So then it becomes, you don't have to, you know, so they get him. So he gets voted in. So he becomes a thing. Um, so. You know, he brings in a lot of money over many, many years, and he kind of has this mathematical ecology thing. He had this uh, book a couple of years, uh, maybe 10 years ago, called Super Cooperators. I've got it in my office. Uh, his opening anecdote for that is how when he goes to buy a coffee in the morning, this is exemplifying cooperation, you know, the person who sells it to him and, and where it came from in somewhere in South America, he's trying to, like, wind this up as people cooperating. Like people are cooperative. Like, and it's this, it's this thing I said before, like this kind of like realize that it's, it's a sort of funny thing where someone's realized, oh, you know, very, I'm going to say very selfish um, kind of individual has realized, oh, all these humans are cooperating with it. Like they're cooperative. I don't know why they do it. They seem, it seems to be instinctive. You know, like, I don't know why any of these people do it. Um, the fools. Right. So, so there's there's a there's a so he has been um he's been um removed from this position recently right so he's been Harvard's had a few of these characters who have been kicked out there was a guy who uh wrote about evil and morality and turned out he faked all of his stuff from studying monkeys <laughs> so yeah that was maybe ten years ago as well sure well there was a I mean there been a few of these there was a Dutch guy who was like really famous uh, psychologist. He was sort of a father of the year in the Netherlands, like all sorts of stuff. And just one day, some student had sent him a thing. So he couldn't figure, the, the student couldn't figure out they had an Excel spreadsheet, I suppose, and they had all this data. And it's like, nothing's coming out. Right. So, so I guess this guy's, he, and he's telling of it, he's like just sitting at the kitchen table with this data thing. And he just says, just changes a few numbers and says, oh, I found some patterns, right? Just comes to his head and he does it. And then for 10 years, cheats like this all the time. And eventually his students out him and he gets, you know, everything all, it all gets retracted. You know, so much of his work gets retracted, which means, you know, you've got 10 authors on things. All of these people lose like a half of their papers or, you know, it's just a complete disaster really. And there's long stuff written about him. I mean, he, 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 you know, he confessed to it. He, he did it. He did admit to it all. And, and it's incredible shame. And it sort of fits into this disaster of psychology and social psychology, because it's always like, it's like little bits of little studies where we kind of studied like, is there a bit of racism in the way people pick up letters on the, you know, like, or is there a little, right? Just all these little things and little stories that people are like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. 
anyway, so, so there've been a number. Um, and uh, anyway, so the person who gave him the $20 million is Jeffrey Epstein. So that's the, that's, that's why it's all fallen apart um, because you can look up Novak and he'll talk about what a genius Epstein was. And Epstein had an office in the space. There was an issue with the media lab in this. So the media lab's all connected Joey to this. Tito, like, approved yeah. Yeah. It was, he was a weird leader of that thing. I was, I was there when Ekrapani was, was the, but he, you know, I sort of lost track of it, but I remember reading about him. He's a strange character, right? I like him. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he probably shouldn't have taken money first. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And we're talking about it in like 2013, 14, 15, 16, like, right? I mean, it's not, yeah. this is well after things have been. Well, no. I don't remember when it was. Yeah. But this is the same with Novak. Anyway. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I talk about this because, you know, I know a lot of these people in it and around. I mean, there are students who have been part of these groups. Um, it's awful. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of money goes into these places like, you know, some of these, like from, from um, Saudi Arabia, right? There's a lot of funding goes into some of these big, you know, and obviously Russia and so on. And uh, it's just, it hasn't been, it hasn't been good to watch. And uh, so some of it is, Falling apart. But anyway, this is, uh, yeah, interesting. You'd hope, you'd hope so. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. How do you, well, I mean, how do you, me how do you measure, how do you measure? Yeah, it's an unmeasurable thing. Like, how do you measure cheating in the world, or do, like of all kinds, right? How do you measure the size of the black market? People try to estimate it, right? Because they can be sort of shadows and imprints of it money moves around in some way but i don't know i mean i've long thought that would be amazing to there's really good data sets on like uh, all the new like blockchain transactions and stuff which you've got to know like, like most of the money is blockchain right so you could probably like get something cool out of that but all the cryptocurrency yeah, stuff yeah, right it's like really good at like data on like networks and like how this stuff is traded you can like follow like this thing from like a to b I mean, I just, so I wonder about that, like, it, it, it is revealing, but, like, are you getting 1%? But are you getting 1% or 10% of all the, you know, dark transactions, if you like, right? Like, I mean, I just don't know. I, I just don't know. I mean, I don't understand economics. Anyway. Oh, I Yeah. Here's a metallic rabbit that I bought for a hundred million dollars. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this. So this is this is weird. Like, why is Lanny there? Um, so just to say, this is you know it's five years after I suppose, but people, four only four years after, but people did seem to pick up on it. A paper gets cited. So I'm, we're pleased with it. It's hard. This is a very hard thing to do. This is, here's this beautiful resource. It's fantastic. You can just say stuff. You can make stories up straight away. Um, but, you know, we had, here's, here's a, you know, here's something where we bring in a, a you know, a, a big bag of sad and um, people have to kind of acknowledge that. And it's interesting to see some of the citations like, well, there are some problems, but we'll still do it anyway. You know, like, um, so that's always funny. We did, uh, one of our students, the paper's not finished. She did a ton of work on it. But basically there was this idea, and I have all this work on this. I haven't finished. But what what Google, what Google is sort of hidden there, and people don't look at this too much, is um, Google Books has the number of counts for a word or an n-gram per year, right, within each thing. But also in there is, a, depending on the year they release it, they have things like the number of pages, maybe they did that, and the number of books the term appeared in. So that's very helpful, right? Because that starts to get in, if you've ever played around with um, uh, TFIDF, that kind of stuff, which is a weird thing. And I have a whole idea to fix that up. That's about finding special things. But here's what you want though. You wanna see like, if a word is really in use, it should be in many books, right? And so if you just go for frequency, 
what can happen, and we see this as, as one like Rainbow, uh, Rain Tree County has a huge spike in one year. And it's because clearly when the books were scanned, there's a, there's a book called Rain Tree County, that it has Rain Tree County at the top of every page and like written through it. So it just, so when you go to the data, you see like, oh, there are 2000 counts for this thing or whatever, but it also says it's in one book. So you can use that to reweight it, right? Because this is not, so I think what Google Books can be turned back into is something that gives you the, a measure of authorial and publishing kind of intent. Like this is what we think people are interested in because we don't have sales. There's no way to go to this metadata, you know, like there's no way to look at some metadata here and say the word chicken was in books that sold this much. It doesn't have that, which we would love. So given we can't do that, I think we can kind of dial on another way. And so you would, there's basically a dial for these. There's a number of books and the number of times something appears. Oh, I think I'm still running my bike. Um, that's not true. The number of, um, and, and so you could, you could wait them, right? And you could punish the thing for only appearing in one book, right? And so then you can look for stuff that appears one time in, in many books. And that's going to be, that actually turns out to be stuff. That's so interesting. God, I haven't uh, it's, it, that's the, um, uh, like frontispiece material, like that, you know, like the, this is generic kind of stuff that's at the start and end of the book because it appears once, like maybe New York in capital letters. Um, something like that. So, so there is a way to kind of mess around with it, but people are, yeah. So this is just to give you an idea. This is 2009. This is the volume of, this is a 2019 one as well. This is, I mean, it's pretty amazing. I mean, this is uh, log 10, right? So this is, this is a pretty good dosage. We're getting up towards a, well, this is a billion. Um, this is a, the, one of the initial, this is a 2012 one. This is a 2019 one now. And you can see the effects perhaps of, of wars, right? Okay, we don't need that. So this is a way of me trying to tell you this thing I've been saying again. Right, so these books get the same vote. <laughs> this is a little rough because this one got picked up and people did talk, you know, it was kind of a bit of a thing for a little while because it was just uh, really rough. And I, I, I don't want to. I mean, it's kind of amazing. So let's look at that one. It's got to be there still. This is, I don't want to be, you know, I, I feel bad. Um, my mother's a homemaker -home teacher, so I feel like I'm. No, I mean, look, I mean, part of this is just amazing. Like this, this all came out of a microwave. That's a cake. Uh, pancakes? Yeah. I mean, kudos, right? So uh, I, I, I think the ratings, this could be dangerous, right? There is not actually a recipe for a milkshake. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, so th these are the kind of rip. This is this is it. Uh, the amount of salt because of my tears of it's really rough. I'm sorry. This is a little bit. There's a little bit of that. I I mean I don't want. All right, I'm being a bad person. But I mean, that, you know, there are, of course, books that we could put up here that no one has ever read that got published, but they would get the same vote. I mean, they, yeah, they, they hoovered up everything. The first round they had, they claimed they four 4% of all books ever written. Yeah. Google's just like, it's, no, this is, I mean, this is a great problem, right? I mean, you know, this is, we're measuring stuff. Like, how do we do this really well? There's Library of Congress. That helps. But then there are all the books that were written in whatever. France or Senegal, you know, like wherever, right? So, what, yeah, right. Which country? And it's also, I feel like Google just says that they like, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, you have access to this because everyone's like, we don't, we're not going to tax you. We can't track. I mean, it's funny. I, I, you know, they wanted to, to so, I mean, there's Google Books, like where you can sort of look through a book, sort of. It's always a little bit, yeah, and it's always a little bit hateful, yeah. Like you feel like you get it, and it's like no. <laughs> um, you, you'll see this kind of you know, new editions of things will we'll, um, give a bump again. But if you really did this in the right way, it would only be 1998 would be for the Sorcerer's Stone, and that's when it would and it would count once in that time. 
Um, this is Lord of the Rings. This is a 2012 one. I know I played around with this a little bit. This is Frodo and Gandalf, right? So these are going to be, um, uh, some of it is, you know, the books themselves and then some little re-releases. But you would think by this point, like this is, this is, well, it certainly didn't exist back here really, but is now, it's, it's lost impact, right? However, during this period of time, an enormous amount of money was made with movies and um, it became a big thing. And New Zealand is basically where hobbits live now, right? I mean, it just transformed their economy. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, always had a good brand, but it, it helped their, helped their brand. Once again, New Zealand is the better version of Australia. Um, well, anyway, so this is also a bit of a problem. English fiction is, is fiction plus literary criticism. So there's some weird things in there. Like you'll see, you'll see Star Trek, Star Trek pops up because there were so many novelizations written around Star Trek. So Picard is just in there, right? Which is weird, right? I mean, people obviously read this as well, but is this really all of culture, you know? And this is, this is, I oh know I sort of play around with this, but this is a kind of the um, version one and version two. Uh, and this is all of English and this is fiction. So you can see, this is just a lowercase word figure. This is the uppercase word figure. And that's indicative of scientific material. We looked at Ed Al the other day as well. So you see it spikes there, a little less in English fiction, but this is still problematic. That's clearly like this, this science being mixed in. Um, all of English still like this, but when they've said this is just fiction, now we've got a completely different thing, right? So all of them seem to have lowercase figures, you know, somewhat flat, but it's like it's a, it's a general word. It doesn't get, you know, moves around too much, but this is really strange and it's like 1900s on for sure. Uh, but yeah, this got cleaned up. So it was clearly something, you know, they did a better job with deciding which things were in which bucket. So yeah, inhaled a lot of science, right? So, so we've sort of pointed to at least back then that you say, okay, you could look at English fiction. You could play with that. It's still going to lack the popularity thing, that, you know, the, this problem, but at least it doesn't seem to have science. I won't go into this too much, but this is the, uh, this is, um, as I said before, this this uh, this this is a reasonable thing. This is a uh, Colbach Liebler divergence. Has anyone played around with this? Can you mess around with this thing? So if you look in here, right, this is that piece there. If you put one over it, that's um, Shannon's entropy. And this is a log. So this is you could flip this upside down, and you could make this log of one over p minus log of uh, it would be log of one over q minus log of one over p. You could do that. So, oh. There's also, if you go into the English department, like way, like through the, okay. They said, <laughs> I'm looking around for, there's not much available, is there? What is it? Okay. Uh, you know, this is this, and you know, rank turbulence divergence is, is the same kind of game where we're, we're, we're compare diverge. These are divergences where we're, it's kind of like derivatives gone mad. You know, the sort of stuff we've done is word shifts are like lexical calculus. It's part of a lexical calculus. Anyway, so if you just think, okay, I'm going to flip this upside down, that would make it a negative, uh, and then there'll be log of one over p minus the, right. So I've got this getting this wrong. It'll be um, it'll be a negative. But I want that. Yeah. So I would make this. All right. Let's just live like this. So p of log of one over q minus p of log one over p. That's what I'm trying to say. So that would be what what this is what what this measures is because there's a a p log p here. So that's the normal Shannon entropy here. This is p log q, one over q. So this this little bit here, this is the if you encoded, um, you you've got these two di different probability distributions. One we think of the p one as this is the correct encoding, right? This is really the frequency of symbols. The q one is uh, this aberrant, this other one you have. So what this tells you, this is the average number of bits 
that you are off from if given given your encoding system you're off from the ideal one the optimal one which um shannon entry is measuring Wait, is it yeah it's it's gonna be oh i guess um it's q yeah that's right so this is the this is the real one you're observing sorry the real one you're observing q is Q is the, the true one. You're observing the P. Yeah, that's right. It's a little bit like the divergence between our distribution we're observing and the ideal one. Yeah, there's a true one um, that you believe, or that, sorry, I'm saying the wrong things. This is a belief. That's my, this is a, interesting. You believe it's Q, it's really P. It could have changed, for example. Um, I mean, what it is, is, yeah, it's the average. So you've got this storage system. You're encoding things with bits. You know, here's a word, and it's, here's its bit string. Here's another word. Here's, here's its bit string. You have the P version and the Q version. Um, you really think it's Q. That's the code book you've created. But then they come along with this different balance of things. And this is how far off your code book is on average. Like how many, like if you look on average, how many more bits are you using to store words than you could if you use the correct, the real distribution. So it's a, re, it's, a it's a nice measure. It's a, it's a, you know, within the context of entry, it's a nice measure. So um, the problem is that if you, so if you have these, um, probably is a zero, which is a little right that which means that you know um, word i doesn't appear in your symbol. It's just not coming through. That's fine, right? Because zero log that that's zero. But this is a bad one. This explodes, right? So if what it means is if you see a word that you don't have in your code book, you don't have a bit string for it of any size, then this just goes to infinity. It says it is. So. You, so you, you, you have this lexicon, you have code for it, this, this, you know, this code thing, and then you want to see how far off you are, you know, given your ideal, this one you believe, and the real one. If there's a word that you've never, you don't have in your lexicon, then it just says it's infinitely far away. So it, it gets too excited, right? That's too much. The, you could imagine a correction that helps, but it just explodes completely because it means, um, right. I mean, that's what you, right. I mean, that's what you would do. But this is just as this, as, and, and the thing is, this is a, a nicely defined thing. It makes sense. But it's just, um, I mean, basically, this is what people do in some way. And I'll show you how they do it. But this, this, this then just doesn't cope with natural language of parent corporate. Like, this is just not a useful thing for us because things are being innovated all the time. So this is going to explode. So it's it's a safe it's a useful thing if you if you if you really know what the lexicon is if you don't then you're in trouble. Okay, it's not symmetric. So this is the this is how how it gets fixed up. Thank you for getting my p's and q's right. Um, uh, is we do this kind of funny thing where we say, all right, we'll have this and, and we're going to use the general thing. This is called like uh, Liebler, and I'll say it badly. Jensen Shannon. Um, I'm not sure if Shannon approved, but Jensen Shannon, maybe they did, um, is, okay, we're going to do something, and, and your, your um, intuition is right. Well, this is one thing to do, and I'm, I'm actually, we, we steer away from it now, right, because we have this turbulence diversion of things. But we're going to have this third lexicon with its own distribution. So these are distributions. P, Q, M is another distribution. We're going to make a third one which of course shouldn't make any sense, right? This is a bit of a weird thing because if these words appear, you're going to pretend like you had them all along. Uh, and we'll make it symmetric. We'll, we'll say, okay, there's a third place we're going to you know, be relative to. And you know, this is what we believe it is. This is what we believe it is. This is what we observe. This is what we observe. So um, <clears throat> it's going to be this. It's as simple. I and mean, there are very variations on this, but the basic thing is we'll just, take the distributions and average them. 
So if a word appears in only one of these and not in the other, you'll get a zero probability here and you'll get whatever it was here and then a half for it. So, you know, we're going to say Moby Dick <clears throat> and, you know, the entire text transcripts of community. Weird thing to do, right? But we're going to say we want to know what the difference between them is. If we do call black label, it's going to explode because of stuff. Um, we kind of want, we like this sort of a distancy thing, right? But it's weird because it's words um, or types. So we could, so, so the idea is to make this mush in the middle, which is half of Moby Dick and half of community, which is weird, right? So that, that's, a, people don't really think of this too much, but that, that does not exist. It is, does not exist. The problem is, and, and this is really, this is really what happens. It destroys the triangle inequality thing, which we kind of like. Um, <laughs> Let's have Moby Dick. I, I had an example. I may have it in here. I can't remember what I do. Um, of a spork and a platypus, right? So you want to know the difference between a spork and a platypus. So if you want to do it with this, you'd have to make a spork platypus hybrid. And then you measure how far the spork is from the spork platypus hybrid and how far the platypus is from the spork. And then you add those together and you say that's cool. That's a good question. I've been experimenting with ideas of like a Pegasus platypus. A plot of Pegasus? A plot of a plot of Pegasus? We need a new mascot. I think if we added some wings to them, then we'd have basically the perfect animal. Yeah. <laughs> or a penguin. What's that? Mm -hmm. It sounds like you guys are trying to fly a plane somewhere. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, this you're trying to measure the difference between two things that are just not even the same universe. Right. Well, that's what, like, there's that's just that's there's no distance between them that works. Right. It's infinite. They're infinitely far apart. That's the problem. By this, by the, the, yeah. What's the space? Right. So. So here's our, you know, here's Moby Dick and here's community. And we kind of make this mashup thing of it here. This, the distance between here and here is infinity with the Kolbach Lieber thing. So um, what we do is we measure that we make this thing. And this is Moby Dick community, horrible, ridiculous thing, right? We just, you know, it's as if distributions, you just take the word counts and divide one by a half, you know, multiply one by a half, multiply one, add them together. So there's going to be whales and coffin and stuff like that in, in this one. And Queequeg, right? And and then over in here is going to be Chang and it's Pierce. The episode. <laughs> Say it again. It's the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was amazing. That was amazing. That's so good. Why, um, Sorry. Why so by union, you mean like you would just, so if one is much bigger than the other, you would. So, so the size of this would matter. Yes. Like you just, you just put the text together. Yeah. yeah. So when you do that, if one text is much bigger than the other, then it will outweigh it. That's okay. And people do that. Well, people do that. They weight this by the size of the text. They do. They do do that. But you have to think about what what that begins to do. Then is um, you know, the gravity shifts to the big one. And in one way, you, what you've done is you've kind of put a little bit of one in the other. So it's so it's sort of all, it's like epsilon. I mean. <laughs> People, people totally do this. I mean, you, you know, you could, but all of these things are still making some kind of funny hybrid. Yeah. So the question is, do you feel, so the rank turbulence diversion probably, they handle this. They're totally fine with things not appearing in one and the other. They count them. And in some limits of those, it exactly gets you that. It tells you like how many things are missing from 
one and the other. The probably turbulence divergence does that, which is quite nice. It's a nice because that's another. There are measures like this that come out of ecology and other fields where basically it's the number of types that overlap. I mean, there are various ways to do it. But like, there are so many types here, so many types here. There are so many that intersect. You know, divide by the total number and so on. It, it gives you an overlap thing. That's useful to know. It's good. It's good. It's good to have that, right? So this this kind of wipes all that out and pretends that kind of there's a you know some of the components of here are all they're all in some big shared universe. So when you mix the distributions, then you're going to take equal components. What equal size components? I mean, this is a standard thing that people do. This it's also sort of reasonable because you're already you know you are making some hybrid. But Julius point that you could play around with that, you could make it weighted, just, it could be just simply adding the text together. Right, that, that, that's also sort of sensible. It depends, you know, and you have to think about what it's trying to tell you. Um, and the more you weight one or the other, like the, the words that, the words that contribute to it, um, will we'll shift around, will shift around. Um, look, the allotax thing, I mean, I thought it was, that fixes all this, it really does. All of that all attack stuff fixes it. So the difference between the side effects of the I mean, it, it's it's part of it. It's like gets it gets you know expressed. You could, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, because the in in the case of the rank one, there's nothing. There's I mean, it it becomes like the yeah, it becomes the yeah, and you that's okay to know that right? Why it's imbalanced one side because one has got more work. You know, that's just true. Yeah. Um, you can play around with this and, and mess around with it and kind of pull things out and you can get the contrib you don't have to worry about this too much, the contribution of each word to the divergence. Right? So this is like the word shift thing. The word shift thing we had four different kinds of contributions, so it's a little complicated, right? But this one, um, they're all positive, right? They're, all of these pieces are positive numbers, they add up to a po the divergence between two things is positive, there's no negative aspects and all the individual contributions are positive it doesn't look like because there's some negatives but that's not how it works um so they can all be sorted just from top to bottom and then you can kind of orient them depending on whether the word appears more in this one or in this one but all of the contributions are actually positive so um <clears throat> no we'll come back to that okay so uh this is you know doing things like what's the difference between you know 1880 and all of the years around it. So the JSD for you know any divergence right of a thing with itself will be zero. And you can sort of see like this is a this is trying to understand like how much does history start to differ? We're trying to get a measure of how different the corpora are as we move around in time. These are just the three three cases. Um, we as we said we're not really happy about English. We're so we're, we're somewhat happy about English fiction. There, there are less books in here, and you can see that kind of effect in the, in the less smoothing. You start to see things that should work. So this is like First World War kind of stuff, Second World War. This is a bit tricky because we start to get to computers and printing and changes. I think. Um, you know, this is trying to understand like what's the what's the correlation length in in memory of 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 a at least in this case, you know, books consumed by by Google. Um, and again, this is a JSD thing, um, but you, you know, it's, it's, it's not, things don't super stick out, uh, but this is every year compared with every year, right? 18, you know, 83 compared with 1924. You can start to see some striations, right? So this suggests this is the second world war a little bit here, first world war. Something seems to be um, a little more different there too. <clears throat> you know, this is like, does history repeat or diverge? You know, what's going on with history? Uh, you know, consecutive years. This is something that I. This is a this 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 is an example where people get excited about this. Like, all right, so what's happening is is, is and we'll really get to this with the Trump stuff, right? What is kind of the turbulence of history? It's a little bit tricky because I think you get some of that effect in here of the scale, right? The size is, even though they're just they're normalized distributions, it's starting to kind of a affect things. Um, 
But this would sort of suggest, and I mean, this is the one we're happy about, right? There's, there's less change over time, which kind of goes against our, maybe our intuition of like, everything is speeding up and the world is completely different to what it was before. But this is like year to year stuff. Um, and then these are the sort of top contributions. Uh, and we had some of this before. This is 30s to 40s. And this is for different, I think this is for English. This is English all, English all, English fiction. So English fiction, you know, if you keep, if you keep the years in, makes sense, right? All those years are there. Um, Lanny, war, American, Germans, you know, you see that war thing, you start to see some things were really like, this isn't good. This, this stuff that's um, problematic. You get some sort of stuff that's more like just sort of word choice. The style stuff changes as well. Um, we're going to get to Lanny. Yeah. It's pretty weird. Lanny, like the number one thing. I mean, so this great history of text, this great history of text, this amazing thing by, by Google, we ask it, what's the big deal about the forties versus the thirties? Lanny, like this, you know, it's like the night, it's like this thing saying, whatever, the answer to the universe is 42. You're like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? Um, you know, most of the others probably kind of sort of make sense. Um, you know, you see things like um, parking lot and those sorts of things appear. Which one? Oh yeah, fifties and eighties is a different one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you know, if you again, more science. You know, U.S. model percent. The, you know, these are this is again, this is English. This is English fiction. So these one, these are very problematic ones. Information is there, much as for all Shannon. Yeah, they're a pair, right? Yeah, that you know, citations one through five. I don't know, but yeah, the parentheses are up the top. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, this is an imprint of science, and, and you know, especially because you're citing things as well. Like science is full of years; it's full of years. We're really driving it. We want more parentheses. Parentheses are cool. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, look, we're doing, it's a funny thing we're doing, but we're, we're just trying to find, you know, what's the big story? Uh, English fiction version one, that was, that was version one. Yeah, English fiction version one and version two. These are just some more examples. Um, these are all English fiction version one, version two, version two. 50s, so this is the one that had all the parentheses in it, right? The 50s, 80s for English, but fiction is different. You know, swearing's gone up a little bit. Now we have computers. Um, you know, we, we have an analysis in the group of uh, Stephen King's work and computer pops up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. I mean, it's, it's very sympathetic to what we're trying to do here. Uh, yeah, all of his books have their own little time series. He's gotten happier a little bit, a little bit. And, and Juniper Lovato brought this up. Remind us that there, he had, I don't know if you know, but he, had, he got hit by a car. He was almost killed. And, and we looked it up. It was 1999. And there is a bit of a, maybe lifts a little bit after that. Is there a thing like, she was like struggling with addiction? She I don't, yeah, I don't know. I All I can think of is he smoked a lot, which he might still do. Yeah. He's <laughs> short stories. I would, I would be interested to short stories. Like, she did some of that. Yeah, there's something there. Well, so Shawshank Redemption is a short story. It's Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. That's a short story. Um, uh, yeah, so many movies, right? So many movies. But I, I as a kid, actually, I, I'd never really read them, but I had nightmares from the ads that would come on for Salem's Lot. Like, I just, it was terrifying. <laughs> anyway, so what, so here's, here's Lanny versus Hitler. And this is what's going on. Lanny was really talked about more. And Lanny Bud is the central character of Upton Sinclair's... It's not the jungle, but it's, it's, a, it's a series of this sort of historical 
fiction of this that centers around, and I haven't read them, but it centers around this character, Lanny Bud, and I think it starts in like maybe pre World War One and kind of goes through all this time. And it's there are many there are many Lanny Bud stories, and this is exactly an example of you know Lanny versus Hitler. I mean, it's really weird. I'm sorry for that. That's just the no, it's really crazy, and I mean we. We had to kind of really think about this. This is really nuts. Here you go. The Return of Larry Bud, Lenny Bud. This is a book. I mean, look at this. This Wikipedia entry is nothing. Um, that's 53. So the, st- the Lenny Bud series. Here it is. 1940, 1953. Series of 11 novels. No one cares anymore, right? But um, if we... But this is because each of those books gets one vote. And they maybe got fed into the hopper more than once, right? Because like, yeah, we're going to scan every book. There's reprints and maybe we're going to scan every book, but like, you know, we're just, we're, we're Google. I mean, I don't know. You know, like we're just, you know, like maybe we scan it a few times. Um, I don't know. But reprints are a big, big part of it. I mean, it's very, well, you know, so there's definitely some, I mean, it's not, it's not as if it wasn't popular. But I mean, Hitler. Anyway, so and it's not like we're just comparing those two cherry picking. These are the two top kind of ones, real, the other ones, you know, character names that pop, go to the top, right? These are really at the top of the thing. And there was Lanny, and if you did say there was also Bud, that was separate. Never heard of it. No, we'd never heard of it. And we, you know, we found it, of course, by searching, but it was weird. We just thought Lanny was a, like maybe a, an American name that was common or something. I like, you know, right. I don't know. It was weird. Like Larry misspelled. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Pulitzer Prize. 43. Yeah. Out of print and nearly forgotten for years. I mean, after all that eBooks. Yeah. Yeah. The return of Lanny Bud. <laughs> Oh, that's the last one. Oh, that's the last one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Upton Sinclair. I mean, I guess many of you. So. He was a muckraker. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Of course, right, the um, the jungle is, is really, really famous. So this is just weird. Like, what do we do with this? Like, is this thing telling us about history? Like, I don't know. So... This is he and she, this may be, you know, this is, so this is stuff again, where it's not indexed by popularity, but it does, what, what you can kind of see is like, you know, did something come into existence? You know, we looked at Harry Potter the other day. Harry Potter doesn't exist, right? It doesn't, as a two gram. The word Google has floated around actually, right? So, boop, 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 you know, so, but to say like now, you know, here's a time series and it kind of went from this to this and it doubled, you can't say that's twice as popular. Like you can't really say anything like that. Um, anyway, um, this is he versus she. So this is, um, this is English fiction. Uh, hopefully we did version two for this, but you see a bit of a change there. Uh, 980. This is, this is problematic because it's, again, this is the one that's full of science, but it's sort of gradually changing. Um, this is the one we've talked about before, figure, percent, data, computer, you know, those things growing over time, a bit of a problem. Um, maybe I didn't label that properly. Yeah. And this is, this was one I started with the other day, but this is an important um, thing, right? This was a, one of the big, big results very compelling was like, look, Oh, we, we talk more. This is just the year, year numbers, right? Um, we talk more about where we are as time goes on. Right. So there's a lot being discussed. It, it's just really present in books. And then there's a, but it dies away faster. So there's this idea of like things are speeding up. Okay. Uh, things are, you know, things are speeding up. But if you look at say English fiction, you don't really see that pattern at all. Right? English fiction version two has, you know, I mean, comp- it's messier, comparable kinds of spikes and the, 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 the memory is not as clear. And the reason this is here is because of science. This is, this is um, scientific publications have this really, um, some really you know, beautiful patterns like half-lives of journals and so on. There's all these scaling stories with citation patterns. 
Uh, okay, but this is this is. Oh, I know we've oh, we've super run out of time. Um, I just I got to show you this. So this is a 2018 um, piece that was posted. I mean, this is what happens in the New York Times all the time, right? People put things in there, and there's a book. They have a book, right? I mean, it's a bit of a dance. So this is the decline of sacred speech, right? And they're using the Google Engram corpus, which is just really deeply problematic. But it's, it's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so sort of things like love, patience, gentleness, and faithfulness. They're not good science terms. Um, so these are these are just not going to be there. So the, the the opportunity for cherry picking is kind of enormous. Um, here's the book, learning to speak God from scratch: Why sacred words are vanishing. I'm not picking on this because it was a God thing, but it was really a big deal. Like we see this pop up every now and then. Um, yeah, it's not that long ago. Is it four years? Uh, anyway, this is the, the you know, this is the, we, we've managed to get ourselves into a Wikipedia. You know, we didn't put it there, but that, that was good. So there's, you know, criticisms. It's good. Da, 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 da. However, there's a viewer. It's pretty good. So we're going to, you know, it's, it's going to be a problem. All right. So I think we've run out of time, but um, if you could somehow get more metadata in there from the start, like this, these are here are, I don't know, even just like these are fantasy books, these are sci-fi books, these are, da, 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 da. The, the, these are where these words came from here. Are, you need a lot more little zip distributions basically. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, there, we do have this other, you can actually get book text. There's a half a trust foundation we have it so you can kind of go through it but looking through that you realize what a what a horrible mess it is um it's hard to clean the ends and the start and ends off books right the kind of verbiage the front matter and the end matter so that sort of just gets picked up we were looking at um you could, if you use kindle you can play there's a thing called x-ray and you can play around with that and it shows you where characters appear and so on or tries to we we're, we were messing around with it the other day and the main character of the story actually wasn't <laughs> included somehow they just whatever algorithm they're using didn't pick that up um but they also picked up like place names like london in the fantasy thing because it's published by a publishing house in london so it's got nothing to do with this story of course but it it, it, it says here's a place in this book and so a lot of books are going to have london and new york in them um, so how to do that automatically is is hard all right, I know that's that, that's plenty of, plenty of time. It is also escape time. Eleven thirty. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna burn it down now. Okay.